In number one, the following diagram, it says, which of the following is not an example of an inscribed angle? So what does it mean to be an inscribed angle? Inscribed angles are inside the circle. That's number one. Number two, inscribed angles touch. Uh, I should be more specific. The vertex touches the circle. So those two things have to happen in order to be an inscribed angle. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go down uh, uh, um, answers one, two, three, and four just to kind of see and process of eliminate our way through this because we're looking for the one that's not an inscribed angle. So here we go. Uh, angle NST. Well, angle NST, you start with N down here, and we go NST. And that would be this angle right here, that angle right there. Now, does that look like an angle that's completely inside the circle? No. So we can pretty much stop there in terms of our answer. Okay, that's going to be our answer. But let's quickly look at two, three, and four and see why they fit the description of an inscribed angle. If you look at MNS, MNS, there we go. That's inside the circle and it vertex touches the circle. Uh, angle SNT, SNT is completely inside the circle and you can see the vertex touches the circle right there. And the last one, NSM, NSM, you can see angle S right there is completely inside the circle right here and the vertex touches the circle. So number one uh, was pretty straightforward, but you do need to understand what an inscribed angle actually is in order to be able to process and eliminate your way through those wrong answers. Number two, in the circle below, AB is parallel to MC. So those are two parallel lines. And, uh, and diameter AD is drawn. So if angle MA, uh, angle uh, DAB, that would be this angle right here, angle DAB. So let's go ahead and mark that angle right there, is 52 degrees. If that angle is 52 degrees, what is the measure of arc CD? Okay, so let's go ahead and darken in our arc CD because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the arc length. Now notice the arc length is the measure of that central angle. So we can find that arc in two different ways. So we're looking for the measure of arc CD. That's the unknown. Okay, so here's the way we can approach a problem like this. We were told we have parallel lines. So I'm gonna go back to that statement there. This line here was parallel to this line here. And this diameter you can see is a transversal that cuts that line. And one of the theorems that we learned in IM2A last semester was that two parallel lines cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are congruent. That makes this a 52 degree angle as well. They are alternate interior angles. Now, look carefully. If this is 52 degrees, then that means this angle here, the remaining angle would be 180 minus 52. Because we have a whole line, which is 180. So go ahead and do that. 180 minus 52. Figure that out. Tell me what you get. Please be prepared to use your calculators today. How much? 128. Now, remember, arc CD is a measure of that central angle. So since the central angle, measure of arc CD is a measure of that central angle, CMD, which you found right there, CMD, you just found it, which is 128 degrees. Question three, 
question three, we're going to be using the concept of isosceles triangles quite a bit. It tells us that we have circle K points L, M, and N lie on the circle such that angle K and M, that's this angle here, K and M, go ahead and darken in that angle right there, is 26 degrees. That little angle right there is 26 degrees. And it says L, N, M, which is this angle here, L, M, N, this angle from here to here, from here to here, that whole angle is 98 degrees. It says, what's the value of this central angle here, L, K, M? So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that angle right there. Well, here's what I'm gonna show you. And I'm gonna show this to you first before we begin the problem. I don't know if you see this right off the bat, but you need to be able to notice that when you have radii and cords that are connecting parts of radii, you essentially have an isosceles triangle. I'll darken them in so you can see it. Here's one isosceles triangle. You guys see that blue triangle right there? Those sides are equal. And guys, if those sides are equal, that's a 26 degree angle. So is this over here. Equal sides, equal angles. That's what makes an isosceles triangle. So there's the first triangle. Then I don't know if you guys noticed, but do you guys notice another isosceles triangle over here? You guys see it, the yellow one? Those two sides are equal, which means that this angle here, which is not 98, by the way. 98 is the full angle from the base of this triangle to the base of that one, which includes the 26. What we're trying to say is the isosceles triangle, the yellow one, has these two smaller angles equal. Well, let's find that angle right there. That angle there is L, M, K. That's what that angle is there. Let's find that. So the measure of angle L, M, K is going to be your 98 degrees, the full angle between the two bases of the triangles, minus the one angle from the blue isosceles triangle, 26. So let's start by subtracting those. Tell me what you get. We get how much? 72 degrees. Now that means the base of this triangle is 72 degrees. Uh, and the base of that triangle has an angle of 72 degrees. So 72, 72. And there's our unknown angle we're trying to find here. We're trying to find the central angle of that yellow isosceles. Now, all three angles of a triangle, all three angles in any triangle always add up to what? They always add up to 180. So here's what we're gonna do. To find angle L, K, M, which is our unknown, we're gonna take 180, which is the total sum of all the angles in that yellow triangle. Remember, your eyes are now focused on the yellow triangle. We only use the blue triangle to get that 26 degrees on the left-hand side of it. We're done with the blue triangle. Get your eyes off of that one. Your eyes are now focused on the yellow isosceles triangle. And the total angles inside have to be 180 minus one of the 72 degree angles minus the other 72 degree angle. So subtract those and we get a total of 36 degrees for that central angle right there, which is option number two. All right, flip your page. Question four says that circle O is shown with points F, E, F, G, and H lie on the circle and chords F, H, and G, E intersect at point J. Based on this information alone, which two angles below do not have to be congruent? Ladies and gentlemen, were you told that those two chords are parallel? 
We were not told that information. That's going to be kind of important. We were not told those were parallel. But here's what we do know. Let's process of eliminate all four possibilities, and we'll figure out which ones are congruent, and we will eliminate those possibilities so that we have only the angles that are not congruent. Here we go. Number one, or uh, answer one, FJE. Angle FJE is this one here. F J E. Go ahead and mark off a little tiny curve to represent that angle right there. That's that middle angle caused by the intersection. And HJG. HJG. That's the other side of the intersection. Are those two angles congruent? Yes, they are. So we're going to go ahead and eliminate that as a possibility. Those two angles are congruent. Anybody know why? Because they are called vertical angles, and vertical angles are congruent. Any two angles that are opposite a crisscross intersection are vertical, and vertical angles are always equal. They're always congruent. In, pos in um, answer two, it says angle EFH, which is this one here, EFH. Everybody go ahead and make a mark on your paper that looks like this. Make two little curves right here. That's EFH. And angle HGE, HGE. Let's make a little couple little marks down there as well. We want to see, is angle F equal to angle G? Are those equal angles? Are they congruent? Well, watch this. Angle F is created by these two rays that extend out like this. Do you notice that angle F intersects the arc down below right here that I just colored in black, EH? You guys see that? Do you also see that angle G is created by these two rays that extend out like this? And doesn't angle G intersect the exact same arc? The logic would tell us that these are going to be congruent, which means we can eliminate them. Why? Because they intersect, or you could say intersect, you could say intercept. Both of those words are the same thing. They intercept the same arc. They intercept the same arc EH down below. Okay, how about the third possibility? Angle EFH, which was the one up here, and angle GHF. Now, GHF, guys, is this one here. GHF is this other angle down here. We're going to check that one out. The only way, the only way that this angle is equal to this angle is if those two lines are parallel. Parallel lines cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are equal. Were we told those two chords were par are parallel to each other? No, we're not. So since we cannot assume that they're parallel, that's the one that is not necessarily congruent. Okay, now the fourth possibility, uh, F, E, G, and G, H, A, that would be these bottom angles here. And you guys can see for the exact same reason we just talked about, this angle E intercepts that arc, EG, but then this angle H down below intercepts the exact same arc. So by the same logic we had for number two, this one is congruent. because they intercept the same arc.
specifically arc uh, FG up at the top. All right, so every once in a while in a multiple choice problem, this was a good practice for us because every once in a while in a multiple choice problem, you have to process and eliminate your way through the wrong answers to arrive at the right one. In question five, points A, B, C lie on circle M such that measure of arc A, B, C is 262 degrees. Let's mark off A, B, C. A, B, C is this big blue arc that's going all the way around the outside of the circle. And it has a measure of 262 degrees. Now, let's figure out what the other arc is. What is arc A, C? If arc ABC is the big arc, the major arc, arc AC is the minor arc, the gray arc, and that one, guys, would be 360 minus the 262 because the gray and the blue have to add up to a 360-degree circle. So go ahead and subtract those two. And what do we have so far for arc AC? It's 98 degrees. Now, we're looking for the measure of this angle right there, that inscribed angle, right there, right there, angle B. Well, the measure of any inscribed angle is always half of the arc that it intercepts. Well, arc ABC, uh, or angle ABC, excuse me, intercepts arc AC, the one we just got done finding. So this would be half of the 98 degrees, which is 49 degrees. In question six, it says points E, F, G, H lie on circle O such that the measure of F, E, H is 65 degrees. F, E, H, 65, F, E, H, that's the top angle here. So let's go ahead and make a note of that. This was 65 degrees up here. And we're told that the measure of GFE, GFE, that's the angle on the left, this one here, that one is 80 degrees. Now, I'm gonna show you a longer way to do it and then I'm gonna show you a shortcut in just a minute. That's really, really going to be helpful. Um, yeah. Okay. So how could we go about figuring out the measure of angle FGH? How do we figure out that angle there? So we want to know this angle. That's our question mark. Well, this angle, guys, this angle intercepts that large arc that I am coloring in black, the major arc, F, E, H. Okay, it intercepts that. And so here's what we know. We know that the measure of angle F, G, H, which is what we're trying to find, is half of the measure of that arc, F-E-H. That's an inscribed angle. Inscribed angles are always half the measure of the arcs they intercept. So we got to find that black arc. Well, here's what we can do. Here's how we can find that black arc. That's the major arc. The minor arc would be F-H, the rest of the circle. Arc F-H, how do I find the blue arc? Anybody know how I find the blue arc? Well, I do know that the half of the blue arc is the angle F-E-H, the 65 degree angle here. So half of arc F-H is equal to 65 degrees. And yes, go ahead and multiply both sides by two. And arc FH is 130. Okay, now we're getting there. We're getting there. 
So if arc FH, the blue arc is 130, what's the black arc? What's FEH? It's 360 degrees, the full circle, minus 130. 360 minus 130 is 230. Okay, lastly, angle FGH is equal to half of arc FEH, which we just found. So it's half of 230 or 115 degrees, right? That seems kind of long, like, wow, I do all that. Now, you guys ready for the shortcut? Because there is a shortcut that literally takes five seconds. You guys ready? I don't think you're ready. Here it goes. This shape inside here is a four-sided figure called a quadrilateral. Inscribed. In fact, I'm going to put this as a, a star. Let's start this. Opposite angles. Of inscribed. Inscribed means totally inside. Opposite angles of inscribed quadrilaterals. Quadrilaterals. That means four-sided figure. Are supplementary. Now, what does supplementary mean? Underline that word. Define it. What does supplementary mean? That's the end of the sentence, by the way. What does supplementary mean? If two angles are supplementary, what does it mean they do? They add to 180 degrees. So here's basically what we're suggesting. Look at these angles. Angle FEH, which is the known angle 65, and angle FGH, which is the unknown. Aren't those opposite angles of the quadrilateral? Therefore, angle FEH, which you know, plus angle FGH have to add up to how much? They have to be supplementary, right? Therefore, if this is 65 degrees, 65 plus this angle, FGH, adds up to 180. Go ahead and subtract 65 from both sides, and what do we get? FGH is 180 minus 65 or 115. Like I said, there's usually always more than one way to solve a problem, more than one way to come up with a solution. This just happens to be the shortcut. Okay, and we're going to see this concept of inscribed quadrilaterals show up a couple times. So this shortcut can shave off easily three or four minutes in solving a problem. I'm sure you guys have heard this phrase before, work smarter, not harder. This is definitely one of those times. Flip the page. Question seven, we have circle M diameter QS intersects RT at W. If the measure of arc RS is 131 and ST is 21 degrees, then what is the measure of R W Q? Okay, let's make a note of all this information we were given. So the measure of arc R S is this blue arc here. So that's the blue arc, and that is a measure of 131. Let's make a note of that. Then arc S T, which I'm gonna color in gray, is this little guy right here. That one is 21 degrees. Now it's asking for us, it's asking guys, what is the measure of this angle here? It's looking for that angle RWQ. So let's go ahead and make a mark right in there. And what is that? This is the angle, the concept in this problem 
is the angle formed angle formed by intersecting chords. And that's what we have here. We have two chords intersecting. We have uh, angles that are formed in the middle. And the angle, how do you find that angle? R, W, Q. It's going to be the, the sum of the two arcs they intercept divided by two. So it's going to be arc R, Q. These two chords intercept this arc and this one. So it's going to be arc RQ plus arc ST over two. It's the sum of those two arcs divided by two. Now we know one of them. You already know one of them. ST is 21 degrees. You already know that one right there. You don't know RQ, but you can find it. You can find it. And here's how you do. Does everybody see how this whole thing right here is half of the circle? We can find RQ, and I'll just do this down here below. RQ is going to be half the circle, or 180 degrees, minus RS, which is 131. Guys, go ahead and subtract those two for me. How much we get? 49. Okay, so that's 49. So that right there goes right here. as the other arc. So we have two arcs that we are adding together. So now when you add them together, and this is the important part, make sure you add those two and hit enter. Hit enter before you divide by two. We ran across this problem on a Wednesday when we were doing this particular lesson. Make sure you hit enter before you divide by two. And if you do, angle RWQ is about how much? Should be getting thir about 35 degrees. Okay, number eight. Circle K chord CD bisects chord AB at E. If CD is partitioned so that CE is four and ED is 10, which of the following length is AB? All right, here we go. Let's underline that word bisect. To bisect means to cut in half, okay? That literally means segment AE, which I'm gonna darken in black here, is equal to segment BE, which I'm gonna darken in yellow right here. So the black equals the yellow. That's what bisect means. Those two segments have the same length. I don't know what those lengths are, so I'm going to let I'm going to let them equal x. So this is x, this is x. I don't know what either of them are. But I do know that CE is 4 and I do know that ED is 10. So here we go. We came up with a relationship and I'm going to darken in those colors too. I'll make CE a blue segment and I'll make uh, DE a gray segment, okay? So here's what we came up with in class. We came up with, uh, and we derived this and uh, proved that the two segments that make up a chord, the blue times the gray equal the black times the yellow. Blue times gray equals black times yellow. And so, this becomes A E times B E equals C E times D E. Remember, you let A E and B E both equal X. So X times X equals C E, which is four, times D E, which was 10. X times X is X squared equals four times 10 is 40. But you need to write your answers in simplified radical form. So this is really, again, 4 times 10. 
which is the square root of four times the square root of 10, which is two radical 10. Okay, now that's only X, that's not the answer. The answer is the length of AB. Guys, AB is the full chord. This is half the chord. This is half of AB. So to get AB, we're simply gonna go two times X or two times two radical 10 and you get four radical 10. So that's where students will typically make a mistake is they'll stop here and go, Mr. Hiller, the answer's not there. And I'll just remind you, you didn't read the question. Then. Okay, it says circle L, now that's a typo. It's either a typo in the question or a typo in the picture because it clearly says circle O here and says circle L there. I don't know which one's a typo. I'm gonna make this circle L. Circle L, PB is tangent to the circle. And the measure of AC, this one here, is 130 degrees. The measure of arc AC is 130 degrees. The measure of arc AB, which I'm gonna color in gray, is 62. This one right here is 62. Okay, what is the measure of angle P? Now, this is a concept known as intersecting angles of intersecting tangents and secants. That's the concept. That's the concept of this question. Because this AC or uh, P, PC, excuse me, PC is a secant because it touches the circle twice, right there and right there. Whereas PB is a tangent because it touches the circle only once. Okay, so now how do I deal with a problem like this? Well, the angle, that exterior angle, if you remember, we found it by taking the big arc that it intercepts Take a look at those two. I'm gonna darken these in so you can really see them. I'm gonna darken them in bright yellow. Okay, does everybody see that angle? See that, that secant and that tangent? Okay, do you guys know, do you guys see that they intercept that little arc right there? There's the small arc. And this arc up here that I'll put in green, that's the big arc. So when we say that exterior angle is going to be the big arc, which is that big outer arc there between the two yellow rays, minus the small arc, well, that would be this little gray one here, also in between the two yellow rays, divided by two. Now, you know what the little one is, okay? So the little one is minus 62 degrees. You already know what that one is, but you don't know the big one yet. How are we gonna find the big one? What do all of your arcs, blue, green, and gray, what do they all have to add up to? They all have to add up to a full circle, don't they? They all have to add up to 360. So to find that green one, we're gonna go 360 minus 130 minus 62. And that'll be this arc CB right here, or BC, whichever. Figure that out, guys. Put that in your calculator. Go 360 minus 130 minus 62. And about how much is that green arc, the big one? 168. That is the rest of the calculation right there. And that makes it pretty easy. That goes right there. And then make sure you hit enter after you subtract those two numbers. So angle P is 168 minus two, hit enter, divided by two. Well, 168 minus 62 is 106. Take half of that. Should be getting about 53 degrees.
right, question number 10 is made tough because you weren't given a picture. So let me share with you what the picture should look like. Two tangents are drawn from circle A to an exterior point M. So everybody, let's draw a circle. This is circle A. We're gonna draw a, from a point on the circle, we're gonna draw a tangent line out to some distance. And then from the same point or from another point on the circle, we're gonna draw another tangent line that goes to and intersects with that first one at point M. We're gonna label that point M. We're gonna label the first point we made as point A. The second one is point B and we're gonna label a point C way over here on the far side of the circle, okay? So this problem was made definitely more challenging without the picture. With the picture, a little easier. It says, which of the following is the measure of angle M? Well, angle M is an exterior angle. So exterior angles, how do we find them? It's big arc. We just got done doing this problem. It's big arc minus small arc. And when I say big arc and small arc, I'm talking about the arcs that are in between the tangent lines divided by two. Here's the big arc. I'm going to color it in blue. The big arc is ACB. The little arc is the minor arc, AB. So angle M would be ACB, the big arc, minus the little gray one, AB, over 2. Now, we are told that the smaller of the two arcs is 156. So this gray arc right here is 156 degrees. So minus 156 divided by 2. We don't know ACB, but we can find it. How do you find the measure of ACB? Yeah. It's the full circle minus 156. So 360 minus 156 gives us about 204, thank you. 204 degrees. Go ahead and throw that in the calculation right there. Please remember to hit enter before you divide by two and approximately how much is angle M? Yeah, you get you get about 24 degrees. Very good. All right, flipping the page. All right, now this problem is one in which we're going to set up a proportion. It says uh, in circle M, HG is tangent. To, to this uh, at point G, and it says HK, which is that segment there, is a six, and KL is four. That little segment there is four. And let me go ahead and color code these. So the black segment right there is HK. The yellow segment is KL. So the black is six, the yellow is four. And together, the entire segment is how much? Maybe 10, right? Just add it up. We want to find this missing segment here, which we're going to call X. I'm going to color that in blue. We got to find that missing segment HG. Now, here's how you're going to do it. HL, the secant, touches the circle how many times? HL touches the circle twice. Once here for a short segment, and one's here for a long segment. So you're gonna break that secant into two different possibilities, a short segment and a long segment. HG touches the circle one time, and we're gonna make that one time essentially be um, both times it touches the circle. So it touches the circle once, and we're gonna apply it two times. So we're gonna set up the following proportion. And that is HG, so a short segment here, HG, is to HK, short 
Short segment is to short segment, as long segment is to long segment. As HL, the long segment, is to HG also being a possible long segment. That's kind of weird. HG is a long segment and a short segment because it's only touching the circle one time. So it really qualifies as both. Kind of a weird concept there. Go ahead and, and uh, take your cross products, guys. Remember, we let HG equal X. So this is the same thing as X over HL or X over HK equals HL over X. Take your cross products. What do we get? X times X equals HK times HL. Well, that would be X squared equals HK was six times HL. The entire length is 10. Square root both sides. We get X equals the square root of 60 which is the square root of four times 15, which is square root of four times the square root of 15, which means HG is two radical 15. So the math behind this was not incredibly difficult because this is all stuff that we've done before. What made this problem hard was being able to set up a proportion of short segment to short segment and long segment to long segment. That was really the hard part. And we're gonna see this type of problem show up one more time in the review. Number 12, we have a circle that has a center at point negative two, five, and a point on the circle four, two lies on the circle. Which of the following is the closest to the length of the radius? Guys, to find this, we're gonna use distance formula. And distance formula, the, the way distance formula works, we're going to go ahead and write it down. Distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And so obviously you have to put coordinate points in there to substitute for x2, x1, y2, and y1. So the best thing to do is go to your coordinate points and label them. X1, Y1 is always the center. X2, Y2 is always a point somewhere on the line. And the distance will be the radius. The distance will be the radius. Distance, radius. So the radius, that's the distance, and we're going to plug into there. So here we go. Let's plug into this thing. Distance equals the square root of what? Well, start with the blues. So I'm going to go x2 minus x1. That's going to be 4 minus a minus 2. And then don't forget to square. Plus, I'm going to do this in black now, x2 minus, I mean a y2 rather, minus y1. So this is going to be 2 minus 5, also squaring it. Well, four minus a minus two, that's six. So, so far we have six squared. Yes? You're right. Thank you. That should be a squared. I forgot to put it. Thank you. No, no, I, that was just a, a oversight on my part, but a, a squared belongs there. Yes. Well, you got the negative and the negative, which have to be dealt with first before you square. So four minus for a minus five. two becomes six. For five. Oh, you mean this right here? Yeah, you know what? That's funny that the, the question was written like that. I believe that to be a typo because the actual solutions to this question show that y should have been positive. So indeed that should have been a parenthesis like this where it's uh, negative two is the x coordinate and positive five is the y coordinate. But I can see how that'd be confusing. Um, 
So yeah, four minus a minus two is six. We got that part. And then this part here, two minus five is negative three, right? We also have to square that. So in our distance formula so far, we have 36, that's the six squared. And then the negative three squared would be nine. And when you add those together, guys, you get 45. But if you look at your possibilities, they're all decimals. So just go ahead and put the square root of 45 in your calculator and tell me what's the closest answer you get to. We don't have to simplify this radical. We just go ahead and compute it. Approximately what? Yeah, about 6.7. Okay, now in question 13, you have to describe the circle with an equation from the graph. Now, in order to do that, you need, we need the center and the radius. So let's get that from the graph. Go over to the graph. The center is right here. You can see that because you go the same amount, left, right, up, or down. Now, I want you guys to count. Count boxes until you get to the edge of the circle and tell me what the radius is. It's six, the radius is six, good. Now, what is the center? X is negative two. Y is positive three. So the center is at two, three with a radius of six, okay? So we need that information first. Now, we're going to plug this into standard form and then make it look like one of these four possibilities here. Well, standard form looked like this. This was standard form for a circle. And it looked like eight, x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals the radius squared, where your h and k were these numbers here. So in place of h, I'm going to put what? Negative 2. So let's do that. We're going to put x minus a negative 2 and then square it. Plus y minus, what am I going to put in place of k? k is 3. And what do I put in place of R, the radius? Six, and then square it. Now, this does not look like any of my answers yet. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clean up this part, and I'm gonna clean up that part to make it look like one of my answers. So this becomes X plus two quantity squared plus Y minus three, that should be a minus, quantity squared equals 36. That one, well, that one does look like one of my answers. That's number one. Okay, so in a question like 13, right, we just need to be able to pull that information from the graph. Okay, now it says the circle has the equation x squared minus 8x plus y squared minus 2y equals 33, which represents the length of its radius. Okay, so we need to, when, when we have to convert this into standard form, we have to complete the square twice. So let's begin by expanding this out. Start there. X squared minus 8X plus, leave some space, plus Y squared minus 2Y plus, leave some space. Leave more space, and then we can write equals 33. Now, underneath each space, you're leaving the space for the algorithm. The algorithm for completing the square was B over 2 squared. Again, I put this in here just as a reminder of how to do the algorithm. Identify your B first. B is negative 8. B is negative 2. Start with the X B. The X B. Negative 8. Take half, everybody. Negative four, square it, 16. So we're gonna write plus 16 here, minus 16 here. Add 16, subtract 16, you're adding zero essentially. Do the same thing for the y's. 
Negative two, take half. Negative one, square it. Positive one. So we'll add one and then simultaneously subtract one. So first step, let's group those all up together while simultaneously subtracting negative 16 and negative one. Okay, we get two perfect square binomials. What's the first one? X minus four squared. What is the second one? Y minus one squared. And then those two numbers there, minus 17 equals 33. We're gonna go ahead and add 17 to both sides to com complete the equation in standard form. And we get x minus four squared plus y minus one squared equals 50. Now here's the thing, we wanna know the length of the radius. Well, this right here is r squared. So r squared is 50 which means r is the square root of 50, right? I got to take the square root of both sides. Square root of 50 is not one of my answers. So what do you think I'm going to have to do? What do you think I'm going to have to do with the square root of 50? I'm going to have to simplify it. What's the largest perfect square that divides into 50? 25. 25. So you're going to break this up into 25 times 2, which is the same as 20, the square root of 25 times the square root of 2, which is 5 radical 2. And that is one of your possibilities. That would be choice number uh, 2 right here. All right. Coming down the home stretch, last five questions. Number 15. We have an isosceles triangle EFG is shown inscribed in circle O. The measure of GEF, angle GEF is 34 degrees. GEF is this angle right here, 34 degrees, GEF. Determine the measure of arc EHG. That's this big blue arc, this big major arc around the outside. So that's what we're looking for. That's the question mark. Well, here's what I need. I need this inscribed angle here because here's what I know, guys. I know the measure of that inscribed angle, which is E, F, G at the bottom. Everybody see that inscribed angle at the bottom? That angle is half of the measure of that arc. E, H, G, which means if that angle is half the arc, it means the arc that I'm looking for, arc E, H, G, is two times the angle. So I really just need to find angle E, F, G. That's really what's holding up the problem. You have an isosceles triangle that makes this problem easy to solve. If this is 34, what is this angle over here? It's an isosceles triangle, which means two equal sides, two equal angles. This will also be 34. How do I find that missing bottom inscribed angle that I want to find? Those two angles would be 68 degrees, wouldn't they? 34 plus 34, right? Angle E, F, G at the bottom. would be 180 minus the 34 minus the 34. I don't really need the 68 there. The, the 68 is 34 minus 34. So what is 134 minus 30, 180 minus 34 minus 34? Sorry, how much? It's one, was it 112? Okay, so 112 
degrees right there. So now we're almost there because we know that this arc EHG is going to be two times that angle. So two times 112 would be 224. There are, there are, there is another way to solve this problem, but I think this was probably the fastest and most efficient way that, that I could think of. Uh, in question 16, it wants to know why opposite angles in a quadrilateral must be supplementary. Okay, here we go. I'm going to break this down into, I'm gonna talk about, does everybody see how angle A is an inscribed angle? You guys will see that? Angle A is an inscribed angle and angle A intercepts this arc B, C, D. So I'm gonna make a note of that. The measure of angle A is half of arc B, C, D. I'm gonna make a little note of that. Angle A intercepts arc B, C, D in black that you see right there. Now in blue, I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but from the other point of view. Angle C down here intercepts which arc? Does everybody see how angle C is an inscribed angle also that intercepts this arc, BAD, the blue arc? That means angle C is half the measure of that blue arc, BAD. Well, here's what we know. What do the two arcs have to add up to? Black and blue have to add up to what? 360. Okay. Arc B C D plus arc B A D have to add up to 360. Now, didn't we say that arc B C D, that your angle is going to be half of that arc? Angle A. Angle A is half that arc. Angle C is half that arc. So in other words, what is half of 360? Yeah, so that means angle A plus angle C have to add up to 180 because the angles are half the arcs. Therefore, this angle and this angle have to add up to make 180 degrees. So there are a couple other ways to explain it, but that's one way right there. And it goes on to ask, BC, this segment here, is perpendicular to DC, this one down here. Explain why AD must also be perpendicular. Well, we're going to use the exact same logic. Why is this perpendicular to this? Guys, are they not opposite angles? What did we say before? Opposite, we use this as a shortcut in an earlier problem. Opposite inscribed angles in a quadrilateral. are what? Supplementary. That means they add to 180 degrees. Okay, now if one of them, if you already know that this is 90 degrees, 90 plus what has to add up to 180 degrees? 90 plus what equals 180? 90 plus another 90. The other angle A should also be 90 degrees. In other words, 
angle A, we already saw right here, angle A plus angle C has to add up to 180, right? Well, 90 plus 90, right, adds up to 180 degrees. That's sort of the numerical equivalent to it. Question 17. In circle M, chords A, C, and D, B intersect at point E. The measure of angle A, D, B, that's this angle here, guys, A, D, B. Let's make a mark down there. That's 32 degrees right down there. Uh, and we know the, the measure of arc CD is 140. So let's mark that one too. CD is this arc across the bottom. That's 140 degrees. Now, we wanna be able to explain why this angle here, DEC, that angle right there is 102 degrees. We wanna explain why that is. We're told that it is. We want to explain why. Well, the concept in this question, the concept is angles formed by intersecting chords. This comes right from lesson three in unit seven we did on Tuesday. Now, intersecting chords those two chords, AC and BD, they intersect. And the way this works is the interior angles. So the angles, in this case, it's going to be angle uh, DEC, is going to be half of the sum of the arcs that they intersect. So here's arc AB. Those two chords intersect two arcs, arc AB and arc CD at the bottom. So they will be, this will be arc AB plus arc CD and then take half. You guys already know what arc CD is. It's 140 down at the bottom. We need to find what is arc AB. So here's how you can find it. Does everybody see that we have a 32 degree angle down there? And that inscribed angle D, way down at the bottom, that inscribed angle B or A, uh, angle A, D, B, this angle right here, that 30 degree angle, that angle intercepts that arc, which means that inscribed angle is half of that arc AB. So we can find arc AB by doubling that 32 degree angle that we have there. So two times the 32 degree angle would be 64 degrees. There's your other missing angle. The measure of angle DEC would be 64 plus 140. Go ahead and punch that in your calculator, hit enter, divide by two. And indeed, we get 102 degrees, just like we're supposed to. So this is one of those questions where it gave you the final answer, but wanted to see why. All right, flip the page, last two questions. Uh, in number 18, we have circle O, secant QT intersects O at S. And um, such that QS is four, the tangent of QR has a length of eight, determine the radius of the circle. Now I did this problem two different ways. There's definitely a long way and a short way. Um, the longer way to do this problem is essentially to do this. You have a radius that you have right here, which I'm gonna call X. Well, that's the same as this radius right here. That's also X. You know that QS, which I'm going to put in yellow, this segment right here, that is four. 
And you know this segment here that I'm going to put in blue. That segment is eight. So you can use, one way to do this is use Pythagorean theorem. Make that side A, make that side B, and make all of that side C so that you literally go eight squared plus X squared equals X plus four squared. That's one way to do it. This is the longer way though, okay? Because you have to multiply out that polynomial, combine like terms. Ultimately you end up with X equals six, okay? It just takes a few more steps to do it that way. So the other way, the other way to do it would be to take your um, radius and we can set up a proportion. Proportion is just two radius, two uh, ratios equal to each other. And the proportion would be short segment to short segment equals long to long. Short to short equals long to long. Short means short segment, long means long segment. So a short segment would be Q to S. So QS is to QR. Because remember the tangent line is a short segment and a long segment. As QR is to QT, which is the other long segment that touches the other end of the circle. Do your cross products. Now, what we have here, the uh, short segment, we have QR times QR. This is the same thing as QS over, or we have QR times QR equals QS times QT. Now, QR and QR, well, that'd be eight times eight. That's easy. We already know what that is. QS was four. But what was QT? Look at QT. What is that? What can we write as an expression for that big, long thing right there? Well, X is the radius. X is the radius. X is the radius. That full distance would be 2X or X plus X. And that 2X gets added to four. So this whole distance would be two X plus four. QT would be two X plus four. All of that. Kind of weird, I know. Distribute those. And we get 64 equals eight X plus 16. Let's go ahead and subtract the 16 both sides. And we get 48 equals 8x, divide away the 8, x or the radius equals 6. That was, both ways were kind of long, but that was a slightly shorter way to do it. The other way involved you taking 8 squared, which was 64, plus x squared, plus expanding this out to X plus four times X plus four, which becomes X squared plus four X plus four X plus 16. Uh, and I shouldn't say plus that was equals. Now this X squared and this X squared are gonna cancel because they can subtract from each other. This adds up to eight X. This adds up to 16, and this is 64. And if you look, guys, you end up with the same equation here as you do here. So it solves exactly the same way. It's just two different ways to do exactly the same problem. All right, and then the last and final problem, we have an equation shown represents a circle in the coordinate plane for some unknown constant k. It is known that the circle, that the point 16, 5 lies on the circle. Let's write an X above the 16 and a Y above the 5. We need to find K. And in order to do that, we're going to plug 
16 in for x and 5 in for y. And then we're going to find k. So let's take that equation. Let's recopy it down. x squared minus 14x plus y squared minus 4y equals k. And everywhere you see an x, what are we going to plug in for x? 16. Everywhere you see a y, what are we going to plug in for y? 5. Let's do that. The first one would be 16 squared minus 14 times 16. Okay, notice I just substituted 16 in place of x. Plus, in place of y, I'm going to put 5, 5 squared, and 4 times 5. And that's, of course, all going to equal k. Now, what do we get when we do this? Well, this part here, 16 squared, would be 256 minus 14 times 16 would be 224 plus 5 squared is 25 minus 4 times 5 is 20. So in other words, what is K equal? I want you to put all that in your calculator. Tell me what K equals. Thirty-seven. Okay. Now that's your part A. Now part B, we're going to recopy that equation there, but we're going to replace K with thirty-seven. So x squared minus 14x plus y squared minus 4y equals 37. Now, in order to state the center and the radius, you've got to go through the completing the square process. To complete the square, first thing we do is spread out the function. This becomes x squared minus 14x plus leave some space for b over 2 squared algorithm plus y squared minus 4y, plus leave some space for b over 2 squared algorithm. Leave a little more space equals that 37 you just found. Let's finish this off. Your b terms, identify your b terms. If b is negative 14, let's go through the algorithm. Negative 14, take half. Negative 7, square it. 49. So if I add 49 here, I have to subtract 49 over there. The second B term is negative 4. Take half. Negative 2. Square it. 4. So if we add 4, we must subtract 4 from here. We're going to group our X terms into a perfect square X binomial. We're going to group our y terms into a perfect square binomial. And we're going to subtract negative 49 minus 4 more. So negative 49 minus 4 more, that's easy. That's negative 53. Okay, but what about the uh, perfect square binomial? What does this grouping here become? X minus 7 quantity squared. What does this grouping become? Y minus 2, quantity squared. We can finish this off by adding the 53 to both sides to get it into standard form. This becomes X minus 7, quantity squared, plus Y minus 2, quantity squared, equals 37 plus 53, which is 90. Okay, now here's the thing. What's the center of this circle, guys? Seven, two. Remember, the center is everything that's after the negative, right? After the y minus and after the x minus. That's your center. So my center, seven, two, 
seven, whoops, sorry. Seven, two is my center with a radius of what? Well, if R squared, if R squared is 90, go ahead and square root both sides. And we get that R is the square root of 90, but you're supposed to write the radius in simplest form. So what is the largest perfect square that divides into 90? It's gonna be nine. We're gonna break 90 into nine times 10, which is the square root of nine times the square root of 10, which means the radius is three radical 10 in simplified form.